Hello everybody. This will be a brief demonstration on the different modules available within the platform. Let's begin. First thing you'll see when you log into the platform is our dashboard right here. We'll use these four widgets here to keep tabs on any reported emails that have been found harmful, the number of reported users that are online with the phishing reporter installed, any investigations that are running auto or manual, and the ROI will be the total number of revenue saved by using the incident responder module. First thing we're going to start off with is our threat intelligence module. This will scan the internet for any breached or exposed email accounts with your domain names that are on the platform. As you can see here, we don't have any detected threats, but just to see what this would look like, you can see here the platform would show the breached account, password type, the source, and the year that it was leaked. The next thing that we're going to look at is going to be our email threat simulator. This will use the platform to send malicious style content to your email service provider to see if their firewalls or spam filters are able to stop this malicious content from coming into the user's inbox. We do recommend that you use a test account with your domain instead of your real address. In order to start a new scan, we'll simply click new scan. You'll get this warning not to use your real email accounts. We'll enter our test email address, choose automatic with password or manual with no password or continue with Microsoft 365 if this is a Microsoft account. Enter our password if we click automatic with password, click next. For scan and delivery settings, we'll click continuous scan. For distribution, we could choose the sending limit we can add an SMTP delay, and we distribute emails over a specified time. Click Next. Once you read through the user agreement, click I accept the user agreement, and click Save. While your scanner is running, you'll see under Status Running. You're also allowed to see what attack vectors will be sent to those email accounts, and you are allowed to add a new attack vector if you'd like. Under Actions, we can view Report and we can see a report of the scan that we completed. Here you'll see total attacks sent, secure endpoints, insecure endpoints, and unchecked emails. You'll be able to see a breakdown of the scan info, as well as your score. And then for stats, we could see down here a breakdown of the different attack types, or we could sort by the email status. And that completes our email thread simulator. Next, we're going to cover Phishing Simulator. Phishing Simulator allows us to send realistic phishing campaigns to your end users. If we go from Phishing Simulator to Phishing Scenarios, you'll be able to see the different scenarios that we offer. And we can search these with different filter methods. If you don't want to see complete scenarios, you can see email templates, as well as email landing pages after they click on the link in that email template. If you want to create a new scenario, new email template, or a new landing page, simply click Add Template and you'll be taken to our template editor where you can create email templates or if you're under landing page, you can create landing templates. For scenarios, you'll be able to combine together the email and landing page templates to create a scenario. Under Campaign Manager, we'll be able to see any campaigns that we have already launched to our end users. If we click Create a New Instance, we will be relaunching this campaign to all of our end users. If we click under actions, we can view a report. We'll have these four widgets here. This will be the number of users that haven't responded, the number of users that have reported the email with the phishing reporter feature, the number of users that have opened an email, and the number of users that have clicked the link within that email template. If we scroll down, we'll see a summary of that campaign that we have launched. And if we go up here, we could see more detailed information on users that have opened the email, users that have clicked the link, users that haven't responded, users that have reported the email, and then a sending report of all the users that have received this campaign. To launch a phishing simulation, we can do this one of two ways. We can either pick the scenario that we'd like and hit fast launch, and this will take us to a page where we select our target users. We can name our campaign. It'll take us to our campaign summary page, and then we'll click launch. 
The other way we can launch a phishing campaign is to go under Campaign Manager, click New, and we'll complete the same steps as before except you'll be able to select the campaign that you want to use for your phishing simulation. Now that we've completed the phishing simulator, we're going to move on to Awareness Educator. Awareness Educator will allow you to launch any cybersecurity related trainings to your end users. Similar to our phishing simulator, you'll be able to see a list of all the trainings that we offer within the platform. If you'd like to create a new training, you can simply click new here. You'll add in any related information such as the name of the training, the description, the category it falls into, the target audience, and then finally the zipped SCORM file of that training that you wish to upload. To launch a new training, we'll simply go under more actions to the arrow here and click send training. You'll assign this training either by your target user groups or by campaign. You'll select the training content language. You'll schedule when you want this training to go out. You can send email reminders to your target users who haven't completed or opened the training. We could select if we want a certificate to be rewarded when the user completes the training. We can mark this as a test to exclude it from our reports and we can set up automatic enrollment to enroll new target users that have been added to the target group. Finally, we'll see a summary and we'll hit launch and that training will be sent out. Under enrollments, you'll be able to see the trainings that you have enrolled your end users into. If we want to view a report, we'll click view report under actions and you'll be able to see here, similar to our phishing simulator, we have these four widgets here, which will explain what users open the email, the number of users that are in progress of completing the training, the number of users that have completed the training, and the number of users that haven't responded. You'll see a breakdown of any information related to that training enrollment. Now that we've covered enrollments, we're going to go down to certificates. This will allow us to create custom certificates that will be rewarded to the end user when they finish and complete their training with a passing score. We have our default certificate, which cannot be deleted. You'll see here that the owner is system. If you'd like to create your own custom certificate, we'll simply click new. You'll name your certificate, enter a description for that template. If you're a reseller company, you'll choose what companies are able to use the certificate. And then we can use our certificate editor to edit our certificate by changing the logo, any text on the screen, add images, remove images, and so forth. And when you're done, you'll click save and that'll save your custom template. If you'd like to make this template a default template that'll be automatically used with all training enrollments, we'll go under the more category here and we can select this option, make default with the star icon here. We also have the option to preview the template, duplicate it, or delete it. Next, we'll cover the incident responder module. This will allow admins to take any action to any possible threats that have been reported to the platform with our phishing reporter button. On our incident responder, you'll be met with these four widgets here. Once again, you'll be able to see the number of users online with the phishing reporter installed in their inbox. You'll be able to see the number of instances that were found harmful out of the total number of reported emails. You'll be able to see the number of investigations that are currently running. And then here, once again, you'll be able to see the total number of revenues saved by using the incident responder module. We scroll down, you'll be able to see any emails that have been reported by your end users with the phishing reporter button. In our investigations, you'll be able to see any investigations that you have launched within the platform. Under more actions, we can view a detailed report of this investigation. We'll be able to see a general report of that investigation. We'll see the users that were targeted, the criteria for our investigation. If any emails match this criteria, you'll see them populate here, as well as the folders that they are found in. To start a manual investigation, we'll simply click new up here. Under investigation settings, we can name our investigation. We can choose what users are targeted. We'll select the date range we want to scan emails. We'll select how many days the investigation will run. We can either choose one, three, or seven. And then the action that we want the investigation to take if an email is found, we can either choose no action, notify the user, move to trash, or delete the email. 
And then next we'll need to have definable filters for this investigation to run off of. For the filter, we could choose anything within the email from header information to body information, any file attachments that we would like. We can also add multiple conditions. We can also switch and and or. So that way an investigation will flag an email if it either meets a specific file name or a specific from address. And then once we click save, that investigation will take place. Next, we'll cover integrations. Our integrations page is very simple. We support different integrations with third-party filters such as IBM X-Force, 40 Sandbox, Cyber X-Ray, Virus Total, Spam House, and many more. If you'd like to add a new integration, we'll simply click new. You'll name your integration, enter a description, You'll select the integration type. We have our API URL here. You'll enter your API key for your integration here. Detection threshold will be the number of required analysis engines that return a positive result for an email to be marked as malicious. Any tags, if we have a proxy, we could define that here. We have URL parameters that we could set up here. Sender IP address, we could enable caching, and then we could either scan the file hashes any portable execute files, or if we want to define any other file types, we could do that as well. And then finally, we could choose the status of our integration and click Save. Next, we'll move on to playbook rules. The way that the playbook rules work is you will define a rule for the platform to analyze reported emails. And if the reported email meets any of your playbook rule conditions, it'll trigger these playbook rules. To create a new rule, we'll click Add Rule. You'll name the rule. You'll add a description. We could select the priority. If we have multiple rules running, we could choose which rule activates before the other. And we can add any tags to this as well. Similar to our investigation, we need to set some conditions. We can also switch this to or if we want to have emails trigger playbook rules based on individual conditions. And then we'll hit next. Finally, we'll add an action. These are the actions that we can have take place when a playbook rule is triggered by a reported email. Next, we have our phishing reporter. Our phishing reporter is an app that we can install into all of our end users' email boxes. This will allow them to easily report a suspicious email with a simple click of a button to the system user to either start an investigation or simply mark that it is malicious. Under Phishing Reporter, we have two tabs here. If we've already launched our Phishing Reporter button to any users, you'll see them populate here under the user list. If we need to create the add-in and launch it to any users, we'll do that here. You'll create the add-in name. You can add your company's brand name if you like, any logos that you would like to include. And then we have all these features here with the button that are customizable as well. We have a warning label that'll appear if a suspicious email is opened and we can modify that text as well. If this is a new button that you're creating, we'll simply hit save and download and then complete the integration steps with your desired email service provider. If you already have the button launched and you just simply want to change some of the features within that button, you'll click save changes and those changes will automatically be rolled out to that phishing reporter button. Next, we have our vishing module. This will allow us to create custom vishing templates to send to our end users to expose them to simulated vishing attacks. We have our templates available here. Under our campaign manager, we can launch our vishing campaign to our end users. In order to launch a new campaign, we'll click new. We'll enter in the campaign name. We can schedule that campaign and we can mark it as a test to exclude the data from our reports. Next, we'll select our vishing template. We have our search features here. Once we find the template we want to use, we can select it and we'll see a preview of that template and then we'll click next. We'll choose who we want to launch this template to and then we'll set the call settings. Our caller phone number will be the phone number that the end user sees when they receive a vishing call. Our distribution we can set to send calls over a number of weeks and then we can select the days that we want these vishing campaigns to go out on. And then we can choose the time that we want to send calls in between. Right now we have it set from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Click next. You'll see a summary of the campaign you're about to launch, summarizing the options that we've selected. And then we'll click launch. 
Under the Vishing Campaign Manager page, we'll be able to see that campaign that was launched here. Under more actions, we can preview the template and we can view a report or delete it. The reporting is very similar to our phishing simulator. We can see these three widgets here, users that have answered the call, users that have successfully been vished and have entered in any possible credentials, and users under no response that have not answered the phone call. We can see a detailed breakdown here. Finally, we have our last feature, threat sharing. Our threat sharing module is a social platform that allows you to connect with other companies on the platform to share any possible threats that you may have come across that you'd like to share with other companies. You could either create your own community here, or if you'd like to join any communities, you can join, request to join if they are private. And if you're looking for any communities or posts to join, you could use our search features here. And that completes our guide through the KeepNet Labs platform. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.